Hello everyone, Raza here. The standard Power Apps Gallery experience looks something like this. How about we modernize it to make it look like this? Or any other style of our choice where we can represent our data in the best way possible. Let me show you how we can do this. Let's begin step by step. In make.powerapps.com, I'll start with a page design. I'll pick the blank canvas, tablet. To leverage modern controls, head over to settings, under general, I'll enable modern controls and themes. So now the insert tab has the modern suite of controls that we can leverage. My goal here is to design a gallery with modern controls. I would like to connect to my data source. I'll go to data, add data, and this can be any data source of your choice, Dataverse, SQL, SharePoint, Excel, and more. In my scenario, I'll connect to SharePoint. Connect to a SharePoint list on my site called Projects. This list tracks details about projects, has different types of columns. Back to my Power App. For my screen, I'll give it a background fill color. I'll pick light gray. The fill property for the screen is set. The alpha property, I'll set it to 0.2. So it gets a lighter shade of gray. Next, I'll go and insert from the classic controls, search for container. I'll pick the container control, position it at the top and full width of my screen. And in this, I'll go and insert the modern header control. Now all of these modern controls that I will be adding, these will respect the theme of our Power App. So as I change the theme for my app, the changes in the theme will reflect in the controls. The modern header control has a title property. I'll call it projects list. It already showcases who the current logged in user is. And there is also an option to place a logo. Here I'll go and upload an image. The container has a property called drop shadow. I'll set this to semi bold. So you can see how it creates this drop shadow effect. Next, I'll add a gallery to show the data from my connected data source, which is my projects list. The gallery as well, I will place in a container. So I'll add the container control position it on my screen and within this I will go and insert a gallery control. I'll begin with a blank vertical gallery. The data source, I'll pick my projects list. The container in which the gallery is placed. The color property, I'll set it to white and the drop shadow effect I'll make it semi bold. We can see how the container helps to create that effect. Now I'll select the gallery, edit and start inserting modern controls to represent my data. To show the title of the project, I'll pick the modern text control, position it. The text property is set to this item dot title. The modern controls now have a style and theme section where you can set the font, the font size, the color, and more. The font color, I'll pick it from my theme. And to do that, I can leverage app.theme.colors. I'll pick the primary color of my theme. The modern text control, 
also has a property called wrap that's on by default. So the text starts wrapping if there is not enough real estate, but I can also turn this off. And what it automatically does is it will place three ellipses at the end if there is not enough real estate to show the entire text. In my case, I'll set the width. My gallery, if I edit the template height, I'll reduce this. Next, in my gallery, I will insert the modern batch control. I'll position it right here, increase its width. The content property, I will set to this item dot my column name, which is project status. It's a choice column, so dot value. The batch control, I'll go to style and theme properties. There are multiple appearance options to choose from. I'll pick outline, the shape, I'll pick square. Color is brand, so it will follow the theme set for my Power App. Base palette color. By default, it's following the color of my brand. I would like to perform conditional formatting where I change the color depending upon the value of the status. Here, I have the option to change the color. The base palette color property currently is set to the following color. Let's change this. I'll use the switch function to switch on the value coming from my project status column. If the value is not started, I will set the following color code. If in progress, I'll set a specific color code. And if completed, I'll set a different color code. Next, in my gallery, I'll use the modern text control. The text property I'll set to this item dot budget. Notice it gives the data out in number format. Here, I'll add some text formatting. I'll use the function text and provide it the following format. And now we have the budget value formatted. Since my currency is in dollars, I would like to show the dollar symbol. What we can also do here is insert emojis. Next, I'll insert the modern text control, text property, this item dot project manager, which is a person column dot, I'll show the display name. Plus, I will insert from classic the image control. Place it right next to the name of the project manager. Image property for the image control will be this item dot project manager dot picture. Next, I will leverage the modern progress bar control. I'll position it right here. This control, style and theme. Currently, the progress color is set to the brand color. The maximum value is set to 100. The value property is currently set to 50. If I change this, you can see how the progress bar indicator changes. And this value property is what I will set based upon the number column percent complete. Base palette color property if this item dot percent complete is less than 25, then I'll pick a specific color, else I'll pick the following color. So it's either red or green, depending upon how much percent is complete. To show the actual value, I'll insert a modern text control and the text property I will set to this item dot percent complete. I'll concatenate this with percentage. I'll insert another text control. And here I would like to show the number of days that are currently left for this project to end. The text property, if 
date difference between today's date and the end date of the project, if this is less than zero, meaning the end date has surpassed, I will show an empty value. Else, I will showcase the value of the date difference. I am recording this video as of the 13th of March. Technology is used. Now this is a multi-select lookup column. In my gallery, go and insert another gallery. I will pick a blank horizontal gallery. I will position this right here. The items property for the horizontal gallery, I will set as this item dot technologies used. And for now, I will edit this gallery, insert the modern text control and set its text property to this item dot value. So you can see how this inner gallery shows the values for that multi-select lookup column. However, I would like to show images here. Now for that, I would have to query my lookup list. I'll go and add a connection to that list. For the app object, on start of my app, I'll go and load that data in a collection, the data coming from my technologies list. I'll run the on start function. So the collection has the information I need. And in my horizontal gallery, instead of using the text control, I will go and insert the image control. I'll position it right here. Image controls image property will be look up my collection where ID is equal to value of this item dot ID. And from there, go and get the photo. So now we can see how it showcases the different technologies that are tagged for that specific project. I'll reduce the size of the image and reduce the width of the template item. I'll also reduce the width of this gallery. Now, if you want to create a face pile like experience, first step is we'll decide how many we want to show in our gallery. That I will lock down to, let's say three in my case. So I'll use the function first n to only show the first three items from that column, which is technologies used. In my main gallery, I will insert the modern batch control. I'll position it right next to the horizontal gallery. The content for this batch control, I'll use the formula count rows of this item dot my multi-select column, which is technologies used minus three because I'm already showing the first three. For the visible property of this batch control, my formula will be if the count rows of this items dot technology is used is greater than three. I'll just add a plus sign right before that value. In my main gallery, I will insert the information button control. I'll position this right next to the batch control and the content property for the information button control concat this item dot technologies used go and get the values and concatenate it with semicolon and a space. So now here's that information I can I can click and it will show me all the values. For my rating control, in my main gallery, I will go and insert a classic control called rating. I'll position it right here. The maximum value is five. Default value is set to three. Default, I would like to get it from this item dot user ratings. Now, user ratings, 
the value is returned in the form of text. To get that average rating from that ratings column, we need to do a little bit of calculation. And this is what the formula looks like. Go and split the user rating by comma because each rating value is given followed by a comma. Go and get the average value. So you can see how it's getting the average values. The display mode for this control I'll set to view. The rating fill color, I'll set it based on the theme. So app.theme.colors.primary. And we can see how by changing the theme color, my entire suite of controls that I added on the screen will change accordingly. Next, for my screen, I will insert another container, position it right on top of the container that holds the gallery. This container, I'll give it a gray background color. I'll give it some drop shadow effect as well. And in this, I'll start adding modern text controls. And these would be the titles for the specific column values that I'm showcasing in the gallery. Project name, project status, and so and so forth. Now I've gone ahead and added all the headings. Now the items in my main gallery, I would like to add a horizontal line as a demarcation for the different items. For that as well, we can use the modern progress bar control. Progress bar control has a behavior property called indeterminate. I'll turn this on. If I preview this, you can see how it gives that nice demarcation effect with a running animation. And here is an extended version of my projects list scenario. Here I'm also showcasing who are the individuals who have provided the rating. Plus, I've added a filtering option where I can filter the data in my gallery based upon the status of the project. Here is a different variation in terms of style of my gallery. The gallery here is in the form of a card style experience. And you can see how each card has that drop shadow effect. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.